So first we're going to locate this Nash equilibrium. So we will find out as we go that in this example game, there's no pure strategy solution. It's not solvable in the strict sense. And there's a Nash equilibrium, but it is not Pareto optimal. So finding the Nash equilibrium, recall that to find the value for rows, we have Colin playing his equalizing strategy in Rose's game without any look at his own game, right? So we'll take a look uh, first for a pure strategy solution. And you can see from the flow diagram that there are no saddle points. So just like with zero sum, that's how we should start for the non-zero sum. And establishing there's no saddle point, then we're going to check for a mixed strategy solution, which is going to require us to look for uh, the Nash equilibrium. Notice that there is dominance. Rose prefers 4 to 0 and 8 to 6. So you could say that for Rose, strategy C is dominated. But we're going to find out that there's some threat leverage she has with that particular strategy. So. We're going to leave it in for now. So we are looking for this Nash equilibrium point, and we're going to establish the value for rows, the x-coordinate of the Nash equilibrium, by looking at Rose's game. And Colin is going to play his equalizing strategy. Not his best strategy, his equalizing strategy. Well, in Rose's game, his equalizing strategy, first of all, must assume that she's not going to play this dominated strategy. And I hear you saying, you just told us we're going to leave that dominated strategy in. Well, that was in the non-zero game, sum game setting. Here, excuse me, we have a zero sum game. And Rose is the maximizing player, so Rose will not play the dominated strategy. So we're just going to look at the oddment solution for the two by two sub game where Rose plays A, B, and Colin plays either A or B. So Colin's oddments, right, four minus 10 is six, and eight minus a negative one is nine. In, so the, in absolute values, right, so our oddments are six and nine. So the proportions that Colin plays A and B are 9 fifteenths and 6 fifteenths, which reduce to 3 fifths and 2 fifths. So now we calculate Rose's expected value. And we take the value 4 times the proportion of time that Colin's going to play A, plus the 8 times the proportion of time Colin will play B. And we get Rose's value in Rose's game against Colin's equalizing strategy. That's 5.6. So now we have the x coordinate of the Nash equilibrium. We're going to solve Colin's game to find the y coordinate. Rose plays her equalizing strategy, not her best strategy, her equalizing strategy. And this time, um, notice that she's playing a non-zero sum game, and there's dominance. But remember, this is Colin's game. So Colin is the maximizing player, and Rose is the minimizing player. So for the minimizing player, strategy C actually looks pretty good. That's a nice one. So this is the one that's dominated. If you look at the calculations, however, you'll, we're going to calculate the expected value of Colin A, which is 20x plus 8y plus 0 times whatever. And then the expected value of B is 18x plus 10y minus 2 times the quantity 1 minus x minus y. And that simplifies. Notice, however, that when we take these two equations, equations 1 and 2, and set them equal to 0, the 20x goes away. So we can solve for y. y equals a half. But then x can be anything in the closed interval from 0 to a half. But this is where it's important to realize that Rose is the minimizing player. The minimizing player does not want to play a strategy like Rose A. So she will set x equal to 0. And then 1 half minus x will be a half. So once we have those strategies, then we can 
uh, calculate the expected value of colon A and find out that the Y coordinate of the Nash equilibrium is 4. You should double check that it also works out to 4 if we plug in values to the expected value for colon B. So now we have the Nash equilibrium. The Nash equilibrium is this point Q 5.6 comma 4. If we take a look at the payoff polygon, you can see that the Nash equilibrium favors rows a good bit. There is a lot of area over here that she's not, uh, that, that Colin may be able to use to threaten her, right? She, there's, a, there's less down here that Colin can be threatened with and a bigger threat area over here. But initially, it seems that this favors Rose because she's closer to the Pareto optimal boundary or most of the Pareto optimal boundary than Colin is. So that concludes our first part. We'll look at security levels in part two.